Hi guys! Um, so I'm just about to make another art journal page and um, this time it's going to be inspired again by my vacation in Malta but uh, other than the piece before where I've never been to that island this time it's something that I actually saw while being down there. Um, to be precise I saw it in Valletta which is like the capital city of Malta and I found it quite interesting um, although I'm uh, quite fond of nature itself. I'm not good with any plant names or how um, plants that are not natural in my region of the world do grow, what they are called, how they um, get their minerals and water and stuff. So I was quite amazed actually to see that a cactus can um, grow out of a dry city wall, like a limestone wall. And what my mother-in-law yesterday told me when I told her what I saw, she said, you know, they have roots that um, are like in the air and they just cling to the stone and they take all their, uh, all the moisture that they need from the air. So made sense to me. But still, I have this uh, beautiful picture in my mind um, that I saw and I'm just gonna try to put that down um, in the art journal today. And I have like a ton of art supplies already on my table. Here you, here you will see it in a minute and I'm not sure if I will use all of it, but we'll see, right? Um, so grab your popcorn coffee, tea, water, caipirinha, whatever you want to drink and whatever time it is in your part of the world and um, enjoy watching me producing an art piece and seeing how it comes together and well maybe maybe it's just entertaining for you so um, here we go so um, I just changed into my painting swag because um, I tend to not only color any surface that I want to color, but also myself and, uh, well, I need to protect my pretty clothes. So uh, I'm changed. And uh, now I'm just gonna flip you downwards and I hope that's okay with the audio. And, um, well, just point you down to the surface. Um, if you saw the last video of uh, Malta, you saw that I had quite a different camera angle because I used the tripod that I usually use when I go like to my easel and paint on a huge canvas. Today, however, I uh, figured um, I'm just gonna <laughs> put you on uh, a very fancy other tripod that I'm gonna post a picture or insert a picture right about now just to give you um, maybe a smirk or a smile. You have to be inventive though, right? So uh, let's just flip you down and see if this works. So, ta-da! I'm just gonna put you like uh, right about there. So putting all that behind and adjusting. So as you can see, my uh, work area is uh, kind of like still messy, but I'm gonna just go through all this stuff that I put uh, on my table um, to uh, oh, hold it. Now, please camera hold. I know you're heavy, but tiny tripod, please hold the camera in place the way I want it. Come on. Hmm, looks good. Anyway, um, so this is like my working area here and I do have like um, a couple of uh, cupboards where I store all my art supplies and just take um, everything to the art table that I w might use on a particular project. So, um, and I have to make some space now to be actually able to work and this is where I show you what I use. So uh, that's my art journal, it's quite bulky. 
um, because I used the sponge on the last one and I hope that I can paint on the new pages and maybe just put something like this to make it more evened out. Just put something underneath, but we will see. Um, also, I'm using just this piece of cupboard today. So what I'm planning is um, over here, like in the background, there should be the city wall of Valletta. And over here, like pretty huge, um, it should depict uh, like a close up of that city wall where you can see the actual stones and a cactus coming out of it. And I'm using this, I'm planning to use this for the cactus only to give it like a 3D dimension uh, when I put the, uh, the cactus onto the city wall. And I'm actually planning to fade out only like the sea here and the sky here and not really um, taking care of really coloring it, going with clouds or whatever. So the, the main focus should be the close-up city wall with um, my cactus. And now you just heard my messenger beep and I'm gonna ignore that for now. So um, what I'm using, first of all, uh, I chose um, white acrylics just for the um, background, just to get rid of the grid. And I'm also using pistachio and olive green uh, acrylics for the cactus together with some really, really old, um, like tiny, um, like glasses full of different colors that I still have and that I want to use up. So these these will be my acrylic colors, nothing more. So that was that. Then for the city wall, because I want to put it into the background, I'm using my shiny water uh, watercolors. Haha, <laughs> my shiny pastels again. Uh, that I just re uh, well rediscovered, I can say, uh, when I started with the Jenny Belly forum and um, did um, join for the monthly challenges. So that's also one thing. Um, in addition, I do have inks here, like stencil inks, different colors, because I think I'm just going for for the fade out stuff uh, like see and uh, they haven't I'm just gonna with uh, go over it with um, like uh, like one of those inks and just smush it out with a bit of water and my shiny towel here and uh, I'm probably also gonna use the um, sorry that's my neighbors with the car um, I'm also gonna use this towel maybe for the stone. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna do that. Um, I have to decide in the next two minutes though. Um, I'm also having like uh, spray adhesive and patch, like uh, like a patch glue for the pastels because I don't have the fix spray at home so this combo actually works too. Um, I definitely have to go to the art supply store and get that um, into st on, on stock again because I'm just not having any of that. Also there's uh, flower pots of different pencils and just sharpie markers that I'm gonna use here and there or maybe more like I do for a while now, oopsie. And uh, last but not least, I do have my collection of X-Acto knives for cutting out the cactus of the, out of the cardboard together with my trusty scissors. Um, just to be on the safe side and because I don't wanna go back to my supply cupboard. I do have the Art Grip aquarelle pencils of Faber-Castell that I use like for 
um, the outlining of a structure when I don't want the um, lines to be seen afterwards because they dissolve with water and when you paint acrylics over it they just dissolve but um, are pretty useful. They're better than graphic, uh, like graphite uh, pencil for me when I when it comes to outlining of stuff like the on the on the lower levels. Um, also, I did uh, take the ink with my whatever this is called. Maybe I just have to look it up and enter the word in here. Um, so uh, I think it's a it's called a pen too, but I'm not sure. Anyways, maybe I'm gonna write down a sentiment. I'm not sure yet. If I do, I want to want it to look old. That's why I do have like the sepia black uh, brownish ink here with this funny thingy, whatever it's called. And in addition to that, a couple of brushes in my water supplies. So I think, um, oh, I just missed something. My great hair dryer to speed up the process of getting stuff dried. So I'm gonna just plug that in. Here we go. And now I have to figure out how I am going to paint the pages and make them kind of level. Because when um, I'm not using my uh, journal but just let it dry, I use one of those hair clips to keep the pages down because they are all quite bulky. But with the sponge, it did not flatten out as much yet. It will. Um, how am I going to do this? I know, I know, I know, I know. I just figured it out. I just need a bit of cardboard in the right size. <laughs> and I don't, ah, there we go. I have quite a lot of cardboard boxes, which I'm currently uh, turning into a huge puzzle on my ceiling slash wall. And uh, that's actually another video that, well, videos, like in plural, that you can see on my channel. So I think this is quite level. This should work. So now here we go. Let's get this funny thing in here because this is where I keep the sponges that still have one pokey part that I can use for shadowing easily and whatnot and like I use it as a palette for the autumns because I don't want to get out like the big palette that I have so let's go for the white and start to paint my brush here we are. Oh, 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 oh. Damn. Where's my mind? Where is my mind? Where is my mind? I forgot the paper that I put underneath to keep the pages from sticking together and like ruining my former designs. So earlier, not former. Let's see how good my English brain is today. So I'm just, again, like as always, I'm just whitening the page to A, give it like an even surface where I can um, apply other um, mediums easily. And I like acrylics for that. And also, like I said, just to get rid. So this is uh, like the A3 size in general, and I find it kind of big. I'm, by the way, very sorry that I don't know the US sizes of that thing. But uh, I guess the 
Holy Internet will um, have information on that. So I do have one more of these books, like with the grid inside, and once that is used and um, filled with art journal pages, I'm gonna buy an A5 book with no grid in it. I guess that's just makes it easier. Could say I'm lazy or efficient. Choose whatever you want that to be. Anyways, I'm rambling. So I got my surface and now I'm gonna heat it up and get it dry with my hair dryer, which is gonna make a ton of noise and I'm probably gonna cut the audio out of it because I don't want your ears to blow away. Enough. Test. Yep, good. So, have a quick sip of coffee. Uh, it's actually perfect when you want to let the page cool down, get two sips of coffee and the page is cooled down enough to go on with the art journaling. So, make use of your time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Also, I'm a coffee junkie, so I'm sorry if you hear or see me drink coffee like all the time when I produce art. It's, um, yeah, well, it's just me. So I'm gonna remove those pages. You can see here that it, ah, that a bit of white color got onto the other side, but it's not enough to have the pages stick together, which is the goal here. And I did not ruin this one. Good. So now with the color on, actually that page is way more flexible and bendable, which will help me out when I draw on this side. Um, it's still kind of sticky, but not really. Hmm. Anyways, let's start on the right side. That is definitely like totally dry. Now we go with the, uh, come on, like with the uh, aquarelle underneath painting, whatever. And I'm gonna go with the yellowish one, like the orange yellow, because um, I'm gonna color the uh, wall in a, like mm, uh, mm, ivory yellowish color because the, all the all the stones down there are limestones so they have really like a yellow touch to them and i think this one will blend in best with what i'm gonna put on top and not have anything seen there so here we go uh, 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 uh. Let's go with the bottom. I wanna have, I hope you can actually see that on camera. Can you see the contrast? Mm. Well, you see where I go with the pen. So even if you don't see the lines, um, you can still guess where everything's going. So, It's gonna be the wall and there's gonna be like green spots on it because um, that's what they do have like like I said all the cactuses cacti what's the plural <laughs> I know the German one I don't know the English one memo to the future Sarah who's editing this video look it up on the internet translate it and put a note <laughs> into the video what the plural of cactus is so they 
Um, Mr. Cactus and his family uh, do grow on the walls, like I said, so uh, I'm gonna have like green splotches like on the lower part where I want to fade out like the ocean and also here and there, so that's actually quite enough. And then we go with the stones and that's actually just a wall and I'm gonna figure out the uh, outlines of the stones like when I put them down with the acrylics I'm not gonna bother now I'm just gonna um, outline roughly where I go with uh, the pastels which is here and where I go with the acrylics and the on top um, cactus like over here so now that's that to make me see progress quickly I'm just gonna go with my uh, pastel chalks first and I want which color do I want this looks pretty much like it yep go like this very very roughly I'm gonna smooth it out with my fingers anyway here we go finger smoothing however while I smooth them out I still uh, keep like the flow of uh, the way I smooth it out like even and I definitely separate between the shadows and the main color the shadow I do in the opposite direction like not this way but this way just to give it uh, more prominence and not to blend it too much into uh, my main color so number one number two that one gets a heavier shadow because it's just closer number three now We go like this, just for the bottom. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you can make funny noises when you color. Now we go even more into a brownish color for the for the um, upper buildings. That's actually what they're supposed to be. bit more. I'm gonna go over this with uh, my markers anyway so I don't care about details. It's just uh, putting on like the colored um, uh, what's it called? Like the the main layout not worrying for about details and going in for details with the markers afterwards so it's just really colored blotches on a page so now okay and now we need we need we need Kind of like more an orangey for this one here. So I wanna show that it is a different building. Now I have to go with a very dark brown. 
just to give it like the really antique old look and kind of like almost falling apart kind of buildings because limestone is if I do remember correctly uh, quite endurable when it comes to um, like aging but uh, salt water and um, wind are not the best friends of that particular kind of stone and down in Malta we definitely saw like the erosion of uh, the weather, the natural weather on the stone. Give it like a rusty look, like old, old, old. Okay, just a tiny here. Give it boundaries. And those uh, walls were made out of huge blocks, almost like the pyramids. They reminded me quite a bit of um, Egyptian architecture. So, again, shadow side of the plan, putting it together, spudging it out. Fading out a lot of stuff. Getting all the dirt from my fingers. And I think that's already it. And my fingers look like really funny. Now I'm just gonna go for the sea and um, like, like the ocean and um, the heaven with my trusty ink colors because they need the longest time when it comes to drying so they can dry off while I take care of like the left part and I'm just going for different blues going for turquoise a lot because there's the turquoise because um one of the most amazing things that I saw in Malta was that in the harbors, and there's like four in Valletta, they do have not only uh, like touristy ships or cruises or whatever going there, but also like heavy industry container ships, like uh, drill platforms were in the harbor, like on the dry dock for maintenance and whatnot. And uh, still, the water in the harbor was turquoise and so clear and so clean that it just amazed me. You could really see, like, uh, it, it almost looked like a swimming pool where you could um, see, like, the, the ocean floor. That one's not opened yet. Uh, like the ocean floor, like uh, five or six meters deep easily. And you could, you felt like you could really see each grain of sand that was in on the, on the ocean floor. So I was really amazed and um, and uh, I'm gonna try to uh, like reproduce that with the inks however I'm gonna use like a brush dipped in water to smooth out the inks maybe even more and I hope that I'm not gonna ruin the uh, pastel color part because that is not fixed yet so I'm going for the turquoise first Going like this, and maybe I don't even have to smooth it out. We'll see. Let's go with the corner. It's not much of a difference. So I'm not gonna smooth. I don't care. I'm just gonna go over it with the ink. Like 
bit of darker. Just a shiny, shiny bit of the very dark colors to give it like a boundary. But just on the shadow side of the where the city wall does the uh, shadows on the on the ocean. And I might have to go over this part here with a couple of more plants because that just looks like. Like um, like a rectangle. So now we go with the blue. Just to the seven. And I'm not. I don't mind that looking like rectangular, but not with the ocean. Like I said in the earlier. Um, like in the earlier uh, art journal video about that page here, the ocean is not quiet, it's wild and smooth and moving and everything to me, so it can't have a shape that we know from, uh, what's it called, geometry? Again, future Sarah, please check on the internet how it's translated. So I'm just gonna, I have like a tiny wet spot on my paper towel and I'm just smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. And I'm definitely going in with like uh, maybe little stones or whatever, just to give it kind of like a boundary there. So now I'm gonna pull out the acrylics anyways, but first I have to clean out my brush because I don't want it white that should work oh god uh, no it don't one more time No, it worked. Okay, so now I'm going for my smaller, like, um, art supplies that are just really, really old. I don't usually use them anymore, but I figure I'm going to use them up here. So I'm going for the brownish color with a teensy tiny bit of yellow. And I want just uh, quite rough, just um, stone-like. Oh God, come on, open. Ah, stone-like um, shapes so far. So I'm going in with the uh, light ochre, light, come on, all right, um, which is a brown with a quite yellow, like it, it has a lot of yellow in it, not a lot of red. And I'm just gonna put the blotches down and I'm keeping like a bit of a border or a space between them because these will be the parts where um, I'm gonna set the darker colors to make the stones look like stones put together and like with a wall that was actually built by men and not just hacked out of a natural stone that was already there which we also saw 
some of those city walls were just um, partially like hacked away with hacked away stones that um, they were made this way instead of like carving stones and building them on top of a natural stony area. Like, um, yeah, now I forgot my <laughs> line of thought. Great, well done, Sarah. Wow. Ah, oh, gosh. Anyways, more of that color. Ooh, that's another supply that I didn't use for like forever. And you can see all the swimmy part up here. And now I'm gonna just mix it with a thicker color underneath. And I hope that I can still reuse that. It's so thin, wow. Well, it's like more than 10 years old and it was not the best quality color ever. So I guess I'm not gonna be able to use that. Sad, sad. Maybe I do have more of that. That's actually, no, that's just dried out. Great. Wow, really? Okay, so I have to go with the yellow and mix it with the remains of the light brown that I have to um, give it more of a brownie color. And it's just quite yellow, but I'm gonna manage. I'm gonna just take some brown here and just plop it down. Yeah, so I'm just gonna change the shadow and light side. Actually, I thought that in the foreground would be the shadow side, like here, but I'm just gonna change it up and make this side the light side so that I can use um, all the yellow part, that it's not looking weird. And now I'm just um, gonna dry that before I put the next layer of like the dark brown on it. It's gonna be loud again. Now I can go with the darker colors and actually uh, form the shape of the stones. So what I'm going to do first is uh, mixing up. Um, I did not wash out the yellow brownish color out of my um, brush and I'm just kind of like mixing the uh, maybe I just should go like this and just mixing them both together to well not waste color or paint for one and um, just uh, to not have the too harsh colors yet because like the um, the uh, Fugen, please, Sarah, translated, future editing, Sarah, translate Fugen into English and put it in. Um, so that I can use the real dark browns uh, on that sad part. Man, I really have a German brain today. Again, I'm not having an English brain. 
That's actually something that is kind of like a private joke. Uh, whenever we uh, have problems to talk in a foreign language, we just have a home brain and otherwise... Because it sometimes happens even that I do have problems to find the German words, although I'm native. And uh, I remember a word like in every other language that I'm able to speak, but not in the language that I want to uh, use at that moment. So we just have that joke that we have like a home brain or an English brain, a French brain, whatever. Uh, it's just the, um, the brain of the day, so to say. Okay, I'm just forming the stones. Now I have to get lighter because we're going to the light side. And this is gonna be a huge boulder, a little bit more yellow. And there is another one. Okay, a little more yellow. All right, now I gotta change the brush and go for really, really dark colors to get the spots in between. can see that this is really old color because it's um, not smooth anymore. You have like tiny blotches in there that are, they look like grain, like sand or something. See? Ha, ah, focus. So that's why you can see that uh, this is really a color that I'm using up right now. But on the other hand, that actually makes it really look like concrete or like a, certain, a natural stone. It makes it look real. So I'm just dabbing that color on rather than like smoothing it out with a brush. I guess this time this old color works like in my favor rather than presenting itself an, as an extra challenge for me. So, dab, 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 dab. I just hope that it keeps the structure once I go over it with, um, with my uh, hair dryer, that it's not smoothing out then. That would be a shame. I'm going for the edges of the page. I don't want the grit to shine through. Okay, some more of that. And once that layer is dry, I'm gonna go in for the 
final shadows uh, of the stones because some of them, well, since they are quite uneven, some of them are farther out and uh, make shadows on the like neighbor stone. Um, but that's not nothing that I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna just um, try to make them look like stones like uh, with the shape. So I'm just concentrating on the shape right now rather than on the final shadows because um, since I'm uh, putting the cactus on top anyways, I guess a big part of the stones will be covered so I don't have to like shadow them. I don't have I don't I don't need to take care of that. So why bother, right? Also this gives like the page a little more time to dry while I uh take care of the um uh -huh, cactus shape. Sometimes I'm at a loss for words. Also, I'm still learning or getting used to talking while I paint, which I usually don't. So, now that is done, I'm just gonna dry it off and I'm gonna put the book aside and uh, work on the cactus. However, you can see that this page here curls up quite badly already. So I'm just gonna put that down a bit. To figure out, do I have two of these? Of course not, because I have short hair. And all my hair clips are downstairs in storage. Yeah, whatever. I'm just gonna draw. Put that away and I can, for one, drink a sip of coffee. Mm -mm -mm. And also, I can take care now of the cactus. This little sweetheart here. And, um, gonna need this. these and of course ah oh, sitting down oh, gosh Whee. Oh, not used to standing that long anymore um for the cactus shape I'm gonna go with the apple greenish color because I think that blends in best with any green color that I'm gonna use so um this sheet here is like half of my book page. It's exactly the same size. So I know that I do have like this part here uh, covered with the stone, which makes it easier to figure out the size of the cactus. Um, and I'm just gonna put it down like here. And I'm not um, caring about like uh, details again because I'm gonna do those with my Sharpies later on anyways. Just figuring out where what goes. Just very, very roughly putting like the cactus leaves. I don't know if they are called leaves. Hmm. Like the shape. <laughs> Everything that I don't know a name for will be called shape. 
That's so gonna help. Wow. <sighs> I'm amazed with my weirdness today. So these will be the underlying things and this will be like the baby leaves and they do have uh, these tiny parts where first of all you see the cactus bloom and also where later on you have the fruits of the cactus that you can eat and again you can guess it by now I don't know the English word of that fruit. So, future Sarah, who will be editing this video, please translate cactus feige and put it in. So I'm gonna just go like this a bit more. All right, and I'm gonna put it, uh, I'm gonna paint it in a style where it's still blooming so that I can use the yellow and the pistachio color. And now I am, I am Henry VIII, I am. Oh, there it is. One of my favorite brushes, synthetic, um, what's it? A size six so I'm gonna start with the dark color on this one and go with the lights later once I'm oh, able to open this baby gosh so that should be enough that blob and Yay! It was definitely enough to put it all over my hand. Now you know what I mean when I say I'm just as colored as my canvas or as my surface when I paint. I can't seem to keep myself clean. That's why actually when you see some of uh, my videos that I wear like rubber gloves like those thin latex gloves because on those days I just uh, did like my nails with a funny comic on them or just weird colors and I don't want to ruin them by putting acrylic paint on them so I wear gloves because I'm quite clumsy when it comes to um, not painting myself so I'm again just going with a very rough shapes coloring the dark parts of the cactus first and I'm not gonna bother with any details because just as so often I'm just gonna put them in with a sharpie now I have to remember where the shadow is coming from on my wall because the cactus and the wall do have to need uh, to have blah 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 have to have the same uh, way of shadows like where it's coming from and the light is coming from this side this time which is unusual for me because usually I have it from the right upper part because being a lefty um, just makes it so much easier for me to uh, paint in shadows and not have my hands like all over the already painted lights but this time 
That's why I'm actually starting with the shadows first, just because I'm a lefty. I always paint from the right to the left. Make that a bit bigger. And, uh, well, let's go with another here. Because it still looks like a kraken and not like a cactus. Let's go a bit here. And a little more here. And there. And there. And there. And now I have to take care that all the lines are covered. Okay, so there's a ton of green left. I can use it later for the plants or rocks or whatever that I actually wanted to do on the right side of the painting. Like uh, underneath the uh, city walls. To have like a border to the ocean. Um, okay, so now on paper this um, color dries so quick. So I can just Go in with the light colors right away and I'm gonna use pistachio because I only have like a tiny bit left. Why not use it up, right? And it's not white, so, but it has just the same, it's, it's just as bright as white. <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> but it's uh, not as cold or has not that sharp like like an uh, like an edge it's not harsh so now we have it coming up from here so we go with the lights this way again very roughly only dabbing that on And these three lines are above those, so I'm not gonna shadow the upper part, but just the lower, or lighten actually, not shadowing this time. Just the... Just the lower part, so now this is in broad sunlight, this too. And that big leaf here as well. And this one, like a lot. This just, oh, this is still wet, but that doesn't matter. Makes a nice shadow too. Go with the light. And this one is in full. Now, here's just the lower part again. With this one, broad sunlight. Extreme sunlight, extreme sunlight, and this one here as well. So now I'm not cleaning out my brush, but going in with a mixture of uh, the olive green and the pistachio green, just as a, add a couple of leaves. Give it like a mid-tone, that makes sense because the black sharpies will darken those um, right almost done okay 
All right, so now I'm gonna go for the blossoms. And I need a very thin brush, like this one. This is a 3.0. And I'm just gonna blob on the yellow parts, like the petals of the blossoms. And not thinking too much about um, shapes yet, because this is what I'm gonna do with that uh, lemon yellow. So this is like the reverse painting, where you go with the shadows first, then go with the lights and then blend them all together. And those um, cactuses, like with the yellow uh, flowers, they look really pretty. There, I did not see a lot of flowers on Malta, but whenever there was a flower, they had like vibrant, intense colors. There was nothing subtle about um, those blossoms there. And uh, we also saw only very, very little insects, like we had no mosquitoes, no bees, or maybe just one. Um, so I think they, the flowers just have to like, uh, be attractive to those few animals that are there. So. I'm just gonna go straight in with a brush into the tube here because I don't need that much and I'm not gonna mix anything so I can go straight in and not bother And any harsh highlights I'm gonna do with the uh, permanent marker, with the white one anyways. Like afterwards. Ah, hold it. <laughs> 